Uh, never mind. Anyway, again, thank you, Esther. I know we've had the opportunity to meet a um, few times. And um, again, I'm glad to have you. I think we all are trying to advocate for the same thing, right? Um, especially in this time and age where things are becoming a little bit difficult for uh, international students, especially being absorbed by American companies. I think it is very important they are informed about what they can do to take the immigration um, journey into their own hands. So I really appreciate you coming over um, to kind of discuss your journey through the EB2 and IW process. Um, and I hope this will be impactful um, to others as well. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much for the invite. And um, I'm ready to answer whatever questions um you have for today. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of questions. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure after this, when I post this video, other people might have uh, questions for you personally. Um, and so maybe this might be later part where if you feel comfortable, maybe you can let people reach out to you on LinkedIn, your email, and um, also if you have any personal um, stuff you want to share with them, that'd be awesome. But um, again, thank you. I will just start with just normal questions I normally ask people about their journey. So can you share um, with us a little bit about your background and what actually led you to pursue the EB2 NIW path? Well, um, thank you for asking. Um... So my background is I have a dual degree in um, MBA and Master's of Science in Business Analytic. Um, I would say actually what made me go through NIW was the fact that uh, I got to know about it 2020. I think that was like a few months into my graduate um, program. And, um, you know, looking at the criteria and everything, I felt like, you know, this is something I could definitely meet. I mean, if I'm going to get my stability using my recognition and my documents, then, you know, why not? So I think in terms of like more of like stability and being able to like, you know, go fly and go um, attain whatever goal you need to attain, you definitely need to have the stability. So I think that was definitely what um made me go, you know, for the NIW and also the fact that I already knew that even while I was in graduate school, I knew that by the time I'll be done with school, I would have met at least, you know, three to four um criterias, which you need to meet at least three of the criterias to be eligible for the NIW um, application. So I kind of did know that since, um yeah, my second um, semester in school. So everything I kind of did, um, towards like school, like everything I did, every like project, every like volunteer, everything I chose, every, you know, classes I did um was just towards like my application oh, for wow. NIW, like what is gonna make my application stronger. So yeah, technically that's my background. Um yeah, it's um business, um MBA, business analytics, and I do I don't even have an experience of up to like I just have like I'll probably say four to five in the United States. So it was a lot of document, but yeah, my background technically is on business and analytics. No, that is that is an interesting background. And I think you mentioned something that might help people in terms of at what point should they begin to think about when they want to consider or take the immigration in their own hands. So you started while you were in school, your second semester. So basically you intentionally plan this out such that everything you were doing was geared towards getting more proof and evidence towards your application. And I think this is very smart. And I should have met you before and I should have learned this from you a long time ago. <laughs> but some of us, when we finished school, we realized, okay, things are going to hit us very roughly. We had to think no, about it. No, but it doesn't matter. We've got to <laughs> get it at the same time. <laughs> no, but that was very smart of you. And, and I think this is something people should learn. Uh, once you get in school, everything you do, you have to be, that's what I've noticed about a lot of um, international students. We are not intentional about the things we do. We just do random things, take random courses. But once you begin, you begin to know what you want and become intentional about it, I think your success rate is very high compared to somebody who randomly, you know, does things here in the U.S. So thank you for um, that point. Um, a follow-up question I, I have for, and I think you might have stressed on a bit, was in, in terms of the... Um, the application you made and the documentation, what exactly stood out for you um, in your application? I know you were intentional about the things you were doing, but are there specific things that stood out um, for you? The, the classes you took, volunteer work, certification, what exactly stood out for you? 
So, I mean, while doing my research and, you know, gathering everything together, I um I got to learn, you know, there are so many lawyers that were like, I probably consulted like almost 50, you know, <laughs> before I got my one that said, oh, yes. you know, I think you're eligible. But everybody was like, oh, you need research, you need publications, you need citations, you know, you need to go do your PhD, you need more certificates. But I think what stood out was the fact that, I mean, they're saying all these things, but when you really get to understand, like, NIW, it's all about, like, what are you bringing to the table? Like, you're not going to use our benefit. Like, so what, like, what, what are you bringing to the table? Like, you know, what is your what or something? Like, I, I mean, I don't want to use the word what, sorry, my bad. But, like, it's technically, like, what would you do for us? You know, if we give you this thing, what skills do you have that's going to be valuable to us? So I also got to know that, you know, I learned about volunteer. I watched a video where a girl legit talked about how it was more about volunteer work that got her into, that got her, you know, NIW application approved. So I was like, okay, you know, I was just a jack of all trade. I was, um, I mean, I, you know, with my background, um, undergraduate was um, management and accounting graduate was MBA and business analytics. I've had research skills. So I was just kind of like all over the place. Like I, you know, did a little bit of research and I did a volunteer, which um, I think that was actually also something that, you know, was very, it was very like looked into like, you know, during my application, because I mean, it was, um, it was um it, I think it was the election period I volunteered to like you know I mean you're helping the citizens of their country they are seeing all that these these are things and you you know these are things they want to see you don't technically need to have like fifty publication hundred publication and if you can convince them that you know okay I already have this background and this is what I propose to do. And these are the skills I have attained to get to this point. So NIW, yes, it's a very tricky situation. But I think what really stood out was the fact that we've all been getting the information wrong. Don't get me wrong. Someone with a PhD, someone with a publication, someone with, you know, it's probably going to get you like easy, quick, smooth ride. They can even do an EB1. But that doesn't mean that someone that doesn't have any of that can get an e um, EB2 NIW. I didn't actually have like a publication or a citation, you know, none of that I mean my background. As, and I, I mean, I could have done that, but I was trying to do all this research in school, but I didn't really get the time to stay long where, you know, it's going to get public, uh, public, um, sorry, published and all that. So I didn't, um, I didn't have any publication. I didn't have any citation, but I had like miss of document. I had research skills. I have I had like analytic. I had like finance skills. I had um volunteer skills. So it was just a mix of different things, and also again it made me realize that you do not need the research and all that to get an NIW approved. That's a very valid point, and. I, I also felt the same. Uh, in my case, I managed to get some papers published, not in top tier journal, just random research gate. But as time went on and I became so interested in this to learn about people's experiences, then I realized you really, really don't need publication and research. Now, just a quick follow up question to the volunteer job, uh, volunteer work you did during elections. Assuming somebody listening to us uh, wants to, because election is coming and definitely there are opportunities for people like us, international students, to be able to deliver their service, contribute their service in the community and in the U.S. as a whole. Where did you find this opportunity? And um, is there like a link? Probably maybe you can give it to me later. I can share. Um, how exactly did you find oh. out about this opportunity? Oh, yeah. And also, sorry, I um, emphasis on just the election being the volunteer. There are other volunteer opportunities I did. I did volunteer with, um, you know, an Institute of Health and Social Justice where I was a research um, an um, analyst for them. I did um other volunteers, but I just you know kind of emphasized on that because I mean that is something that is gonna have like maybe you know a huge stamp and shows how you're involved in the community. So yeah, just volunteermatch.com. Okay. You know, like I said, I've been researching this for three years. So 
I can like legit tell I'm earning the work of my head and the link because I I had to go like deep deep. I had to my goodness. I legit went deep 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 to know you know what I can do to get this thing you know sorted and everything. So yeah, it's it really doesn't have to be, um, you know, just volunteer like Sean. Sorry on the emphasis on that, but um, it could be anything as long as it has to do within the United States. Like whatever you're researching is something of benefit. Like the research I did with the um institute in Florida, it was more about like community, like comparing communities in you know Florida and seeing like. Mm. Okay, where is having the most like um disease? Where is having like sixteen on a pregnancy? Where is having the most drug? Um, you know, so things that like is- that. I get the data and I analyze it for them. So it wasn't just wow. emphasis. So sorry about that. That was just the one that popped no, into my no. head. But as long as whatever you're doing is benefit of U.S. state, city, U.S. vicinity, vicinity, or whatever. You all said so. Yes. Nice. No, no. I I really um I really love the point you're making um uh, in terms of the diverse um volunteer jobs you have to do as long as it is beneficial you add in value to where you find yourself. And I actually have seen one of the lawyers on LinkedIn actually talk about this a lot. So it's not more about the skills you have or what you can contribute. You should have a diverse skill set of what other value can I contribute. Now this begs the question of. How were you able to align the volunteer job you did to your proposed endeavor? Because we know in this process, it's all about you able to show that whatever your proposed endeavor is of substantial merit. So that proposed endeavor, how were you able to align um, these volunteer jobs and other job, um, other work you had done? So, I mean, in terms of like your proposed endeavor, now I'm going to give an example because everything, you just have to... Even the, the things you think you did that doesn't matter, you would you would actually know at that point that it actually really matters. So I said, for an example, you you write about, oh, I want to be a teacher and everything. I mean, being a volunteer is gonna help you communicate with people. You're gonna learn how to do teamwork, collaborate, and everything. So there's still skills you can get you're getting from that that you can use to combine to like, oh, my proposed endeavor. So it's just Examples like that, okay, I wrote about this. My background has to do with like analytics and business. And I, um, sorry, in the, the volunteer, I was a, you know, analyst. I analyzed their data and everything. So I had to incorporate that to my petition later. So I'm just saying it doesn't really like, you can get any skills from any, you know, type of volunteer. Like, I, like again, I proposed to be a teacher and I did a volunteer work. The skills I got from, the volunteer work like research communication talking with people i would definitely use that skills in my teaching work too so you can you know definitely combine look for like the you know the two things they have in common and combine it so yes i think align and that is the main job too of the lawyer that's where the lawyer comes in like they are the ones that you know, although you write your summary your projects all those things and they and like you know they write it into like one petition later but um, it doesn't matter what you're proposing and it doesn't really matter the skills. Like you said, again, a diverse skill. Like, you know, imagine, you know, I want to propose to be a teacher and I have like research and analytics, you know, and then I have teaching skills. That's that's really good. Like, you know, I can be a jack of all trade. I can, you know, do anything to help the community. So it doesn't really, I think having a diverse, you know, field or what you do, I think it actually also helps because I know that my petition had a diverse, it was, it was really like, you know, there was business, there was finance, there was research, there was just, it was, it was just a, a bit of different things, but a way I, you know, these are the skills that would definitely help me to reach what I'm proposing. I had to like make the connection to that, but yes. No, you make, you make a very wise statement here, right? In terms of, um, what you have done. You mentioned like sometimes the things we think and it's not relevant is actually relevant to um this situation. And it's always how how you're able to frame because like when you mentioned okay you did a volunteer job um let me use the, the um the election how does that tie to your proposing them? And you were just quick to tell me you know 
some of the volunteer work, like teaching, um, the research work, it, you are the ability to analyze stuff, right? Even like teaching, the ability to communicate, volunteer work, the ability to work with people. All of these are soft skills that I think most of us all we think about them, the hard skills, the coding, the Python, the R. But these are also relevant skills that I think personally, if I'm hiring somebody, I would hire somebody like soft skills over hard skills because it's very easy to teach somebody how to code, uh, how to do DevOps uh, uh, pipelines, right? Very difficult, um, very easy to do that, but very difficult to teach somebody the soft skills. So I think this is a very good point in terms of we should not overlook certain things that we have done. Those actually are what counts in, you know, in, in this process. So thanks for that quick uh, um, nugget there. I think another okay. question I have for you with, so I know we have spoken before and I know you reached out to a lawyer for profile evaluation and you had uh, an 80% chance of, uh, is it 85 or 80% chance of approval? 80. What? 80? Yeah. Okay. What actually motivated you? Because I've been, I mean, I'm advocating for people to do profile evaluation because one, it is free and two, you get to know your chances. Regardless of your chances, just take the chance. Take the risk to do it. But a lot of people is like, oh, the lawyer said I have 80%. And I have a few people that came back, like, lawyer said 80%. I'm like, come on, do it. I have someone who got 80%. The person did it. So what was the motivating factor for you? Even though 80% seems a little bit high, uh, but of course, like that 20% chance could make some people waver. What actually motivated you to take that chance? So again, um, so yeah, getting the 80%, I mean, at first I did question like, mm, should I, should I not? Because before he gave me that evaluation, I had reached out to another lawyer that, you know, told me that, that was legit. Like, let's say beginning of my second year in grad school, she told me, oh, your profile looks good, but I think you should add like, you know, join this membership, do this, get this um award, CV award and all that. So I was like, okay, no problem. I mean, I still have time, I'm still in school. So while I was ready to get there, I reached out to the lady and then she was like, oh, I think you probably would need to have some publication and citation. <laughs> and then the next morning, I got like an email from the law firm saying, oh, I think you have 80% chance. And uh, I would say what, motiva <clears throat> what motivated me was <clears throat> I sat down, I looked at everything I did from undergrad Every single thing I have done, every um, whether it was volunteer, whether it was one month, whether it was two months, and then I did the Stevie Award where I got the certificate, and then I had the election. <clears throat> sorry, I had the election appointment later, and um, I had this other award I got from my company. So I looked at this, I looked at the criteria. I was like. I made the first one. I have an advanced degree. I think the only thing I didn't meet was a 10 years experience. But looking at everything, looking at my Coursera certificate that I looked down, I was like, no, I think I actually made like five of these criteria or four. There's, there's no way. It's not possible. And then I, you know, I tell the lawyer, I'm going to go with this. <laughs> and then we start the process. I start writing. I start going deep. I'm like, I actually meet like you know and I saw that I actually did meet like five of the because when, when they you know when they um compare your pay and everything that is a requirement so I that made it like the fifth criteria I was like well so you know I mean that was my own I think it depends on you yourself what you've done your project again things you think is irrelevant even if again it was one month, it was two months, you got the skills, you learned something, you picked something out of it, you're gonna use it and put in your next work. So it doesn't matter if you think it's irrelevant, as long as it's something that you know you could align to your a proposed endeavor, then go for it. No, that that is so good. That That's is that's all good. I'm going to say. I think, yeah, that was my own motivation to go ahead and um do the NIW. No, that is a valid point. So I like the fact that you mentioned when actually you started putting things together, you realize you met like five out of that six, apart from the advanced degree uh, criteria. And so it was at that moment you realized you had the confidence to go ahead and do it. I think for most people, first of all, I always tell people, the main source of truth is the USCIS website. All of the details are there. 
because sometimes the lawyers would like i also have similar cases where i when i was in school i reached out to lawyers they're like oh get research work and then I did a research and like, oh, get more citations. I'm like, when is this going to end? Because anytime I'm going to go, there's going to be something. Even if I have like 20 citations, they'll be like, oh, get 100 citations. And so then I started looking at USCIS websites. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Literally, these are very easy documentations to get. Of course, the requirements is at least three, right? It never said all of them. So, of course, the, the more the merrier. So I'm like, oh, my goodness. I would definitely go ahead and do this. So that was a big moment for me when I went to the actual website and realized that out of these uh, criteria, apart from the advanced degree, which I met automatically, I actually can get at least three out of it. I'm like, okay, I'm good, I'm good to go. So I think the advice here is people should not take, you know, just literal what lawyers say. Some of them, of course, they want to build on their reputation. So they would only take cases. They are highly confident. No, would never give like a slim chance to people. Like in your case, the lawyer took your case knowing you have 80% chance and you got approved quickly. So again, that is just for people watching us, just quick advice. Regardless of what lawyers told you, do your own research and be confident in what you have done, especially look back to all the things you've done since coming to the U.S. If you feel you don't meet the criteria, just be very intentional, you know, going forward, what you need to do to be able to kind of improve your chances. And I think it's, it always works out. Um, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, um, Esther, and thanks for that. And just about wrapping up, uh, my last but one question regarding uh, using lawyers. I know there's always like a debate between using a lawyer and doing it by yourself. To you, what was the reason why you went to the lawyer, even though he had given you the confidence by saying you have high chance of getting approved? Could you have done this on your own? Or at that stage, you felt using the lawyer was the best option for you? Honestly, I'll let the lawyer do their job. <laughs> because, no, I mean, again, I understand, like, the money is... All those people that go with, like, PhD, like, this tough law... Like, I'm not saying that the law firm was not tough, but... Sorry, you get what I, I rephrase. No, no, no. But the law firms that ask for, like, PhD and everything, they charge, like, 10K and 8K. So I do understand why people would not want to go with a lawyer. But with me... <sighs> In as much as, yeah, I mean, he gave me the 80%. There yeah, are people I've heard that did their own or just helped, um, got help from like someone, you know, that works in a legal firm or whatever, a law firm. So, but I just, I just needed them to, I mean, if they gave me that, they're the ones out of like, like again, I said, I, I, said I, I consulted a lot of lawyers. So they're the one out of like the 50 lawyers that said you have a chance. So if they said I have a chance, that means they feel like there's something and they could get it. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, again, it's their job. It's you know, so I wouldn't, in my own opinion, I wouldn't want to. I mean, and they were good, you know, law firm. You do down payment, and even while I got my, my NIW um approved, I was still paying until I was done paying. So it was not I got approved. They're like, okay, pay us back uh, everything you've gotten approved. Uh, no, it was just you continue paying doing um, you know the plan the contract you sign on until you're done paying but i would advise use a lot because in mo most cases people that do this alone they end up getting a ref where they'll have to go back to use a lawyer yeah yeah no that that is that is true about about that and i know we use the same lawyer i, I don't know if you got that money back guarantee to me i'm like oh my goodness if you want to give me back my money <laughs> why not take the chance <laughs> no how many percent did you get i got 95 percent. okay probably that's why he gave you a money guarantee because he's assuring you okay. that he's going uh, to get it i got okay. an 80 percent, but i didn't get the money guarantee but okay, I see. again um i would advertise them raju yeah. they're really good because <laughs> when i saw my draft um i would advise you to use a lawyer honestly because when i saw my draft they legit sold me what I, I felt like i would have sold myself they, thought... they did a great job. I, I would give it to them. Like, I I read it through and I was just like, oh, it's just too typo. Maybe you just made a mistake in the amount or something. And that was just it. But I was, I was wild. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, they did their own research. That's how you know that. I mean, again, okay. it's their job. 
So right. that's how you know, like, okay, they really like did an in-depth research. Like the PDF was like, well, almost hundred and something pages. So I would go with a law firm. I would advise. I know it's it's tough. It's a lot of money and all, but rather you just do it and do it right. Yeah. That's that's my own philosophy. I rather just do it and you know hope I do it right because. If you're gonna go with Raju, you're gonna get your money's worth for uh, it was a it was a 36 pages petition later. Yes. Wow. That's that's big. Wow. Yeah. So I would say go with a lawyer if you can. But if you decide you want to do it alone, then um it's also okay. There are people that have done it alone, and even if they got the rev, they still questioned it and and people that really know deep knowledge about this, if you're able to get some help or some, you know, not just it's not just submitting two pages yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's work. It's, it's work. work. No, so if you're no, if you're no. able to do that to put in the work, the research, you know, the terms, look into like what the laws on any um, NIW really says, break it down, compare if you if you really have time to do all that, sure. Go yeah, ahead. but yeah. it's not gonna be a five page, ten page school work, nah. So mm -mm, it's not. That's it's true. not gonna be any of that. That's true. That's true. I I stand in the midway though. Like in in my case, one of course the 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 money the lawyer was charging was great, but again my motivation was like I'll get my money back if he doesn't get it for me, right? Um. So yeah. and secondly, I, I did not have time, and thirdly, I think I was still in the process of trying to understand. All of this whole thing, and I uh, BB2 and IW. Um, yeah. But I, afterwards, when I got approved and I started talking to people, um, I have a few friends that I, I recommended because one one of them was doing his PhD uh, has time because like doing somebody have enough time. So he basically did it on by himself, literally, just use about three months and he got approved, no RFE. Um, so in, in my case, my advice, to be honest with you, and, and this is personal. It doesn't have to be the one way. If you show you don't have the time to do it, as Esther mentioned, go the route of a lawyer, regardless of how much you are paying. But if you have the time and you feel like you are much more detailed oriented, um, you can you can do it by yourself. But either way, I always recommend people to let people review their work. Because even the lawyers, they bring it back to you to kind of review, to make sure there are no mistakes. So the same applies to if you are doing it by yourself, just um, let other people review. And I know we almost passed our, our time. The last question I had for you is, what advice would you give people out there um, who wants to go through this route or who are thinking about it? Or even who don't want to take the step, they are scared to take the step. What general advice would you give um, international students out there? Man, go for it, man. <laughs> Election is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> no, but honestly, if you, even if you have a BS and you have up to, six seven sorry we have up to 10 years experience i think i don't you know i can't really emphasize on beers but if you have a master's that already meets a criteria and you can you know i'm sure every master's student uh, it will probably meet like two three criteria oh, yeah. so go for it man it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt if if a lawyer gives you that percentage and you feel like your documents or what you've done you know, can actually win you the case, then go ahead. Don't let anything scare you. I mean, you would never know if you're going to get it or not until you actually do apply for it. And you will be, you'll be very surprised that you will just get the approval within a few days. So, yeah, go for it. It's a, it's a very secure way, you know, very secure way to get your stability and fly as high as you want in the country so yeah go for it i'll just i'll just advise anybody i mean ever since i got my every any international i mean i'm like oh have you heard about niw is it something you know oh i'll just give them raju i think i have like probably four or five people now working with that guy he actually <laughs> needs to you, start you, paying you, me. you should start talking to him like raju you need to give us some commission i have recommended i can't count to be honest with you because I get a lot of people reaching my inbox and um I used to yeah. talk to people one on one. So it's like, man, I am making that guy rich and I'm sitting here. We have to reach out to Raju. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have people that 
couple of people that went to him, they got 80%. So I have two people that got 80% and they went ahead. I have one person that got 80% and he's doing it himself. But, uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm encouraging. I mean, you know, we talk and I was my friend. I believe, you know, they get, don't get me wrong. There are people that do it themselves and they get it right. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. So if, if it's doable for you, go ahead. If, yeah. if you think it's a lot of work, just go with it longer. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um, Thanks so much. It's it's always insightful. Oh, by the way, let me mention um, the first person that I, I met who told me uh, she got approved without publication was you. <laughs> and so, wow. That oh, wow. out, yeah, that is funny. That is how I, I love connecting with people who are going through this process because it looks like everybody's journey is a little bit unique, although there is always that foundational, you know, uh, element. Yeah. There's always a twist of uniqueness um, in your story, which I really would love people to hear about it because like a lot of people are tied down because of the research and publication and citation issue. And then I met you, I'm like, oh no, you don't have to. So um, I, I'm glad I met you and I'm, I'm really appreciative of your time talking to me and talking to the audience. Mm -hmm. um, we're looking forward if we have a bigger uh, meeting sometime, bringing you on board so you can share more about your experience. But again, thank you so much, Esther. Um, Hopefully we should connect sometime when I come to Boston. <laughs> no problem. I'll probably also meet you when I come to Linus. But again, um, thank you. I enjoyed this. Um, apologies again for taking this more time. So I will definitely be always down to tell people because I think it's a it's something that needs to be out there because oh, yeah. most of them I'm like, damn, I wish I got to know about this during my undergraduate. It's you know, it would have been something that you know, I mean, right from then, then uh, maybe by now, I've been qualified for an EB1. I know. Because most people, too, don't know that they're eligible for EB1A. Oh, yeah. So I have a friend that's a manager. I'm like, yo, oh, she's yeah. talking about EB2, EB2, EB2. I'm like, have you ever looked into EB1? She's like, what was that? I was like, it was like, bro, you know, I was like, just, I was like, yo, just, um, just, no, like, have you ever looked into EB1? I was like, just, um, because one of my friends, too, already knew about this. I was like, comes out the lawyer on both parts. And the other one, I was just like, yo, I think you're eligible for EB1. <laughs> so you should actually see if you can go for an EB1 instead of an EB2, because EB1 is correct. Yeah, it's correct. All. So yeah, um, it's I'm always down. I'm always available to give out information. I, I believe it's something that everyone should know so that we can all at least is a is a pathway. I mean, before it was current before this whole COVID, but uh, we're hoping it will get to a point where to you know keep on being like smooth and everything. I mean, it's just smooth now, but it's a pathway for to your stability where you don't have to stress the company, you don't have to go through. You know, you just it's just between you and your qualifications and your documents and what you've done. No, so again, I don't want to use the word words, but it's kind of that way if you think there about is. it. So it's about what are you bringing to the table? Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Before I let you go, I know you mentioned about the website. Uh, can you repeat it one more time? Volunteer.com? Uh, I might have missed that. No, volunteermatch.com. March as in M-A-R-C-H? Oh, no, oh, M-A-T-C-H. Yeah, oh, volunteermatch.com. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Is there any other website people can also look into? Oh, uh, um, I would know for volunteer. That was the that's the only way. It it actually has a lot. Like no, okay. it has different type of volunteer. Like if you want to do Red Cross, if you want to do justice, if you want to do feeding the people, like go to volunteer too. So it has it. It is very broad. So I think I think okay. that site alone is enough to get Perfect. people a lot of opportunities. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you. Thank you so much, Esther. I um, no wish you a good night and then definitely we'll catch up sometime later. No problem. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.